Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. We're here outside Maxine's Toy Store, where the daring Toy Store caper has struck again. So keep an eye out for suspicious activity while we inject this sketch with a healthy dose of key info about vaccines. Toy crime sprees aside, there is some good news. Routine immunization has decreased vaccine-preventable illness in the U.S. by 90%. And not only do vaccines directly benefit the immunized individual, but they also provide herd immunity. Kind of like this herd of giraffes, herd immunity is achieved when the percentage of the population that is immune to the infection is large enough to decrease the risk of transmission to unimmunized people. Herd immunity threshold depends on how infectious a disease is. Less infectious diseases have a threshold as low as 50%, while more infectious diseases can require over 85% of a community to be immune in order to stop transmission. So yeah, vaccines are kind of important. Still, parents often wonder that receiving multiple vaccines on the same day can overwhelm a kid's immune system. But our immune system is built to manage lots of antigen exposures every single day. This no limit sign in the parking lot is a reminder that there's no limit to the number of vaccines that can be administered in a single visit. So how do we decide what vaccines to give when? Vaccine schedules are updated yearly by the CDC and approved by the specialty societies that take care of children. Check out their sites for up to the minute guidelines. Speaking of when to give vaccines, this baby bird hatching a little earlier than the others is a reminder that preterm infants born at less than 37 weeks should follow the routine vaccine schedule according to their chronological age, which should not be corrected for their gestational age at birth. Hence, the chronological clock next to our prematurely hatched baby bird. Ah, uh, and who's this? <laughs> Anna and Phil up to no good again. Not only are these two crazy kids hiding out behind the toy store highly suspect, but they were also a reminder that one of the few absolute contraindications to vaccination is an anaphylactic reaction to a vaccine or any of its components. On the other hand, relative contraindications to vaccines are more complex. For example, acute illness with or without fever is a precaution but not an absolute contraindication because it may be hard to differentiate a vaccine reaction from just being sick. Also, patients who received IV immunoglobin may not mount a full response to vaccination, so it may be worthwhile to wait. As if Anna and Phil are not causing enough problems, they are also sporting flame bandanas on their arms to remind you of the common side effects of almost all vaccinations pain at the injection site, erythema, and fever. Best to give parents a heads up about these common side effects so they know what to expect. Well, it seems that word is already spreading about the break-in at Maxine's, and the Live at 10 news has started broadcasting, setting the scene for this discussion of live attenuated vaccines. <laughs> live at 10. <laughs> Live attenuated vaccines contain live viruses or bacteria that are weakened or attenuated so that they trigger a robust cellular immune response without causing a full-on infection. Because live attenuated vaccines contain live viruses or bacteria, they shouldn't be given to those who are pregnant or severely immunocompromised. That's why our cop here is keeping this pregnant woman holding a crutch, sketchy symbol for immunocompromised, safely outside the crime scene. One famous live attenuated vaccine is symbolized by this police officer murmuring into a walkie-talkie. The MMR vaccine stands for measles, mumps, and rubella, and the vaccine is effective at preventing all three. Due to vaccination efforts, measles has been eradicated as an endemic infection in the U.S. since 2000. However, there have still been outbreaks in other parts of the world. This is concerning because measles is airborne and extremely contagious. As noted with our herd of giraffes, 
a highly infectious agent requires high vaccination rates to maintain herd immunity. For measles, vaccination rates must be above 85% to maintain herd immunity. And then there's mumps, the forgotten middle child of the MMR vaccine. But so you don't forget, check out the sketchy micro for more info on the lumps and bumps of mumps.